Okay, uh, to, this video is part two of uh, setting up your PIC, connecting everything together. And this video is mainly going to go over connecting the PIC kit 3 to what we've already set up. Um, and then actually seeing if we can get it to, if we can see if we've done everything correctly. So, um, first thing you need to look at today is to go out on the internet and Google for the PIC kit 3 uh, user's guide. Uh, again, whenever you start out with a new new device or a new microcontroller, whatever in in this kind of environment, read through the document at, le at least like breeze through the document and look through the um, index and look for things that you know you're going to need to know, like how to power it on, um, what the pinouts are, things like that. So for this document, all the relevant information we're going to be looking at are for today's video are on page 15. So if I go to page 15, we get this nice pinout. Um, and if we, oh, well, let's look at this pinout real quick. So if you'll notice um, on your pick kit three, you have, you have this little arrow here. Oh, you have this arrow. Yeah, um, that matches this arrow on this, and what you can tell from that is it's the pin one indicator. So it's going to be that it's going to go to that master clear pin. Um, just orientation to keep in mind later on. The next page that's going to be relevant. Oh, I think I had OBS open on that. Sorry. Um, is uh, page sixty four. And that's just talking about power. Like I said in previous videos, to make things simple and to not make you guys worry about buying a power supply and having to deal with all that, we're going to be powering the chip using the PIC Kit 3. I think the PIC Kit 2 wasn't able to do this, so it's a nice feature of the PIC Kit 3. I think they've actually released another debugging tool since the PIC Kit 3. Um, and so hopefully that won't date these videos and make them obsolete, but... I think the Picket 3 is still a really good tool, and from what I saw on Amazon, it looks like they're they're abundant and they're cheaper to, than ever, so it should be a good tool for a long time. I think people still use the Pick Kit 2 anyway, so. But the Pick Kit 3 is nice because we can send power. The only limitation on that is that it can only power the target if the target consumes less than uh, 30 milliamps. So keep that in mind. Uh, the other thing that will be handy for today, of course, is the pinout for the microcontroller. So I think that's page five in its data sheet, um, as you've seen before. But of course, I, I extracted all the relevant information for today, and I put it into, well, I put it into this uh, guy, put it into this uh, image, which I'm going to make a, I'm going to, put a section on my website um, that'll provide links and documentation for these experiments. Um, that way, once we get code, you guys will quickly be able to copy my code um, or download files or view these images if they're helpful to you. So that way you don't have to screenshot or snip out of a YouTube video. But So I'll post links for my website in the description and um, few other things. So let's go take a look at what we're doing today. Okay, so we need to connect the PIC kit 3 to what we've already done. And if you take a look here we can see that it's got six pins, but luckily this uh, six pin LVP is a no connect pin so you actually we don't have to worry about that at all all we need to worry about is the master clear power and ground and then uh, these two data signals so let's talk about what, how we're going to do that I mentioned that it's really nice to have a ribbon cable um, like this guy and the reason for that is the connector on the pick kit 3 they're all just adjacent um, and when you have the ribbon cable, it goes right in, nice and easy. Everything's lined up, so you don't have to worry about it. And uh, keeping that 
orientation arrow on the pick kit 3 in mind. We know that whatever color goes into this top slot goes with that arrow, which is going to correspond to this uh, master clear here. So, for me, I'm picking that to be brown today. So it's going to be this guy. And then since the pinout, since I'm using a ribbon cable, it forces me to keep this same pinout. So, um, as we go down the line, uh, red's going to be VDD. I'm happy with that color choice. Unfortunately, with what I picked before, orange is going to be ground. Um, then yellow and green will be those next two data signals. Um, so here we go. First things first, this... Uh, we're going to do the master clear pin, and I should have put this up earlier. Hang on, let me get this over here for you. If you look at the old schematic, um, notice how it has this line coming in, and it goes into that master clear pin. I think this is to indicate that, uh, that master clear signal. So it's going to go not, not in the node that was shared by the 10K, the 1K, and the cap. It's going to go right, right to the pin. So, keep that in mind. Um, okay, so let's do that. I'm going to take my brown, and it's going right into the same node as the first terminal on that 1K resistor, or aka my master clear pin. So there's that guy. The next two are really easy. It's the power and ground, and I'm just going to stick those guys right into the rail. So, power is red. Ground is orange. Unfortunately, that goes against uh, the, my previous selection of colors. Okay, now things get a little more tricky, but not too bad. We got the uh, PGED1 pin. And uh, if you look through... Oh, maybe I should go through that, too. Uh, where do I have that guy? Let's see if I can show you. Let's go desktop. If you look at the pinout, we have PGED1 right here on 4. And so that corresponds with uh, the fourth pin down 1, 2, 3, 4. And PGEC1 is going to be that next pin of interest. And that is, if you read, PGEC1 is pin 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So those are two we need to worry about. And since we got to keep our colors in order, is that right? Yeah. The first one up is yellow, which is going to be our PGED, and that is the fourth pin down. So we're going to count it out. One, two, three, four. That's yellow. One, two, three, four. Okay. And the next one is going to be that green, and that goes in PGEC right here, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the fifth pin down. Nice and easy. Boom. And then this last blue wire, well, that's our LVP, which is a no connect, so we don't need to worry about that. We can just leave it hanging. Okay. Um, that's all the connections we need to do. So, next thing I'm going to do is plug the other end of that ribbon cable into my I'll scoot it over, why not? Plug the other end into my pick kit 3, making sure that I keep that brown wire, which is my master clear, the same with the arrow, which is the master clear on the pick kit 3. I'm going to plug that guy in. And uh, you'll notice that nothing happens. Well, that makes sense because there's nothing that we can see or hear or feel. So we wouldn't know even if something was going on, unless it, we broke something and there was smoke. So, how are we going to know if we did this right? Um, at this point, if you haven't, go ahead and plug your Pit Kit 3 into a USB port on your computer, and then we are going to open MPLAB X. Boot that up real quick. Okay. So, I guess. Uh, I might do another video on how to create a project, but just because there's a couple setup things you need to do, but let's go through it here. So we're going to do file, new project. 
um, microchip select, microchip embedded, and then standalone project. Click next. Families. This just makes the search shorter. So we're going to go uh, pick 32, but not a C. We want uh, pick 32, just standard. And we're going to find our pick 32 MX 250 F128B bad boy right there. Okay, uh, this is your uh, debugger tool. So for us, that's our pick kit 3. And hopefully yours will identify too, but I'm going to go ahead and select that guy. Click next. Oh, um, it automatically updates uh, like the latest version for compilers and even depending on how old your pick kit is, it might try to update that or the firmware on your chip. Um, I think it's for the pick kit, but again, uh, I'm disconnected because I'm on my, uh, right now I'm only using my hotspot over my phone, so I don't want to use that much data doing that. So. I'm just going to say no, and I updated this a while ago, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to use the compiler version that I had. Got it. Project name. Uh, let's just call this... Uh, pick Kit Connection Test. That's kind of a long name. Feel free to do whatever you want. Uh, set as my main project. Project locations. This is just something you might want to notice where things are going. That way later if you want to open a project uh, and you have switched folders, you'll know where to look. Just keep a mental note of that and click finish. And that's really kind of a nice wizard. It takes a lot of the pain out of everything, um, as maybe I'll talk about later on. Okay, so now we're here. Your, thing, your, uh, your IDE might look a little bit different. I've been in and out of here a few times, so it gives me the start page. Hopefully, you'll have that. Um, we can exit that if you want. What we're interested in for in this video is just this uh, compiler tool chain. And so what we're going to do is just click this uh, refresh debug tool status. And it's going to walk through some code down here. Or it's, it's going to do its thing. I shouldn't, I don't even know what I said. Oh. And what happened? Why did this not work? It said target device was not found. Could not detect target voltage VDD. So, we have a problem. Um, what could it be? Maybe we hooked up something wrong. Um, but actually in this case, that's not the problem. The problem is, I did not tell the PIC kit 3 to supply power um, to the PIC. So we're going to come up here to file. Um, What am I looking for? Hang on. I got it written down somewhere. Yeah, project properties. And I don't have, again, ignore anything that says internet, just ignore it because, again, I'm not connected right now. Uh, okay, so over here in this menu, we're going to go to pick kit 3. What? There are no options to set in this page. Well, that's not right. Hmm. Project properties. Wow, this is not good. Hang on. Hmm. Well, something's not right. It should give me options here. Let me unplug and replug in my pick kit. See if that'll help. Hang on a second. Okay. It is rebooting. I'm going to go ahead and rerun this uh, refresh debug tool. It's going to fail again, but I just want it to I just wanted to see that it recognized it since I plugged it into a different USB port. 
Um, okay, then we're going to go to Project Properties. Okay, that's fine. There we go. I don't know why that happened, but I guess that's the solution. If, it, if you don't get this menu, unplug it and try a different USB port. One reason mine might have failed is I have a, like an external graphics card enclosure because I have a weird computer, and I plug the pit kit into that, and so everything's going over uh, Thunderbolt 3. Maybe that threw it off. I plugged, This time I plugged directly into my computer. Um, but so here we go. Pit kit three options. We need to go down to power, and we need to tell it to power the target um, from our pit kit three. And leave the voltage level at 3.25, which is nominal for this device. So hit OK. And now it's going to send power. So we're going to go ahead and click that refresh debug tool status once more. It's going to do its thing. And Yahoo! This is what we wanted. We have target device pick 32MX250 F128B found. So that means that it's connected correctly or at least correctly enough to where it can talk through the pick kit 3 to the computer. Um, that's going to be it for the video today. Uh, thanks for watching, and hopefully it all worked for you.